Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. And I'm Kelly. Queen Consolidated is a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to the hit CW show starring Stephen Mill and Emily Bat Richards. So yeah, we're talking about episode 312 Uprising. And I don't think the writers were thinking that this was going to be an apropos statement for how the fandom was going to react to this episode. But boy, was it. Yeah, right on target there. Yeah, lots to talk about. But I just have to say that I'm not happy with this episode. I was shocked that I wasn't happy with this episode because I love the writers, I love the director. And once again, it looked good on paper, but the execution was just so lackluster. There were so many holes. I almost lost my freaking mind with this episode. And Malcolm's hair. (gasps) American Psycho! (laughs) You look like a bad Ken doll. Yes! And that's really hard to make John Barrowman look bad. It's really hard to do. Yeah. Anyway, it, uh, like I said, I'm not a happy camper, but I will try my best to keep this podcast positive and upbeat. I will probably grind my teeth into oblivion doing so, but I will do it for you. She has been Grumpy Cat today, folks, about Arrow. Oh, my God. I've been Grumpy Cat since 901 Wednesday Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, we're talking about 312 Uprising. This episode was written by Beth Schwartz and Brian Ford Sullivan. We love Beth Sports. I know. Again, like I said, I really like her with Ben Sikowski and Jake Colburn. Yes. No offense to anybody else she works with. I think those those two writing pairs really get each other and have a rhythm. And I understand that things had to be split up and reworked. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. That's all. This episode was directed by Jesse Warren. One of the good things that I did enjoy about this episode was the directorial execution. I really love mm-hmm. the way he captured the action. Uh, this is his third time directing. He's also directed an episode of Flash. I've never had a problem with this particular director. So, you know, he's more than welcome back. What did you think of the directorial ex- I thought it was beautiful cinematically. You know, even though it had that, we were back to that season one green tinge, it wasn't even overpowering. Like, because I watched it in yeah. HD, like 1080p HD. And sometimes the green filter is a little overpowering, even at that resolution. But it wasn't. Yeah, I agree with you. And I'm watching it. In HD now, too, so... And there are so many little vignettes, basically, of the action. I, li- I like that. Um, but I don't think that the title lived up to its name. Well, it did, just not in the way they yeah, expected. Like on, on, on screen, it didn't really live up to what they were going for, and that really kind of bummed me out. Like, Uprising, this, I thought this was going to be epic, and this was like... Wah, wah, wah. It was a little street brawl. It wasn't the whole city. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but our guest stars were Vinnie Jones, who I uh, will probably see again eventually, but no time soon. Um, we had Ryla Fukushima in the present day and not the flashbacks, which we'll get to in just a second, who plays Tets- Tetsu Yamashiro. We had J.R. Ramirez as Ted Grant slash Wildcat. He got the name drop, his superhero name. <laughs> um, then we had Bex Taylor Klaus as Sin. It was great to have back i hope that she comes back again even though she has her own show on mtv called scream queens um it's only 13 episodes and i'm sure that if she really wanted to make it work they could do so yeah because paul blackthorne is gonna have to come back to her and find out what's going on or adopt her yes or adopt her <laughs> just just because she tells she tells him the truth the only person and we <laughs> like that we like truthful people so then we had uh air Arian Bowie as young Tommy Merlin. 
And oh my gosh, this this kid definitely sounds like a name that should be playing a young Oliver Queen. Jacob Hoppenbauer. Oh wow. Yep, that's young Oliver. And then we have Michael Cram as Malcolm's friend slash Alfred. Was that the only one that got the Alfred vibe? No, you were okay. you were Um and then also we had another young actor that I totally wasn't expecting. Um Taylor Diane Robinson as young uh Miss Al Ghul. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. That was adorable. I, I like I like her. She reminded me of the Vulcan kids in Star Trek, though. Me too! <laughs> yeah. I can totally see her giving it to Spock, son. Um, the ratings this week were uh, still fairly high. We had a 1.2. Arrow is, ever since that Flash crossover, and we've come back from the break, Arrow has been on track. Why? I have no idea. I guess, I guess there's way more people enjoying it than not enjoying it. Well, that's good for the show. Definitely. But what I personally think is, is that a lot of the comic book fans that left earlier in the series have come back because Laurel has finally suited up as Black Canary, and so it's a curiosity. And so we'll see how the episode after Canaries does. Yeah. And, well, and we've also got some of the people that started out with The Flash, I think, tuning into Arrow now. Well, they they keep this up and they're going to (laughs) leave. Yeah, that's true. That's all I'm saying. We had 2,909,040. 940,000 people viewing. I mean, 1.2 in the demo is good. It's, I mean, it's almost up there with Flash demo-wise. So that, that's pretty good for Arrow. I'm happy for Arrow for the ratings. Like, I don't want the show to do bad. I just want them to do better. <laughs> that's all it has. That's right. Um, so let's get into the breakdown. Still operating without Oliver and determined to stop Brick, Team Arrow is forced to weigh Malcolm's offer to help, but... To I'm sorry, to help shut Brick down as Malcolm has a personal vendetta to settle with the antagonist. Roy and Laurel point out that, te- that the team could use some help to save the innocence of the Glades, but Felicity is adamant against it. They look to Diggle to make the final decision. Meanwhile, the flashbacks chronicle Malcolm's descent from kind-hearted father and husband to cold-blooded killer and murderer of his... and the- after the murder of his wife. Okay, hold up. I just have to get this off my chest really quick. Two things. One, it is when Malcolm made the kill Sarah, that killed his chance at redemption, period. If they try to redeem Merlin, I am done. It's just no. I can't. I can't. It's too late. It's too much Too much mud under the bridge. Yeah. You can't sacrifice your child like that. Both and then, them. yeah, and then expect. And after promising, you know, he promised Tommy in this episode he wasn't going to let anything bad to him. Now I know we can't always keep that promise. But he was the direct cause. Thank you. Okay, that's death. my second point. Did we all of a sudden forget that Malcolm Merlin ignored those phone calls while she while Rebecca was dying in the streets and we're supposed to feel bad for him? Are you serious? Did we forget did the writers forget that? Did they forget uh what what episode was that? The Undertaking. Yes, it was in The Undertaking. Did, did we forget that all of a sudden? Are we retconning this? You know, I you gotta wonder. I mean, obviously, we fans don't forget. That's been here since the beginning, so there's no excuse. Yeah, exactly. And and this whole thing with Thea, well, I mean, it's just, it was just sick. I mean, really. it, it's, it's really disgusting, and I, you know, I, 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 I accept the fact that Malcolm as a character is here, and I literally, I say this, I know a lot, only because it's John Bill. Yeah. Let's just be real. We all know, the writers know, the producers know, the fans know. That's the only reason why this character's still around. Yes. But it's too late for redemption. Let a villain be a villain at this point. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad that we agree on that. I think, I think they're trying to play him as the murky Dr. Wells on Arrow. Too late. It's, it's, we're too far gone for that. Right. I mean, he literally sent Oliver to his death on purpose. And put Sia in that position, too. Be- because if Oliver didn't win, he knew it was going to happen. Yeah. He knew he had to know that eventually the truth will come out. Because it always does. Maybe he thought he'd get acquitted like Moira. I don't know. <laughs> Still bitter. <laughs> yeah. Daddy, never going to let it go. But let's get to this episode. Uh, we open this episode with Oliver rushing off from Tattoo to get to Starling City. And Tattoo's like, dude, you need to stay here. You need to rest. You need to recover. You need a different wardrobe than Bruce Wayne. (laughs) Thank you! Oh my god! Thank you, Kelly. I'm so glad I don't have to be the one to do the Batman parallel. You are awesome tonight! I totally was like, oh my goodness. 
Yeah, no, get some different clothes, dude. <laughs> in Tatsu's boots, I'm like, where are we in Budapest? Like, yeah. Uh, just anyway, so yeah, but check this out. So the previous season on Arrow took like a minute and like and some change. And so then by the time we get to the title card, it's only been two minutes and 19 seconds. Right? Boy, we're jumping all over with that. We really are because we had 47 scenes in a 42 minute episode. That's insane. We're back to uh, we're back to the choppy arrow from like season end of season one, beginning of season. So then we see we cut to Laurel and Roy roughing up some of Brick's tax collectors, and you know they break that whole thing up, and Laurel saves Roy, not buying it, but whatever. Yeah. And we see Diggle and Felicity kind of monitoring, and there's people still calling nine one one, and you know Diggle realizes how desperate the city is. Well, the glades are, and it's just all kinds of bad. And and don't forget they hop on the motorcycle and she sins sins Ellen. Sin out of all people really, she mistaked Laurel for Sarah. No. That was that was just really pushing it for me. Yeah. Um, but she she makes up for it later. But yeah, so she hops on the arrow bike with Roy and Sin sees them. And she's like, Hey, you're leaving me again. What a bad big sister. <laughs> <laughs> and she starts yelling though, but she's pretty far away when she starts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you would hope that our superheroes would be a little more absurd. Yes, you would. Uh, then Lance calls Team Arrow and offers his help. And then after that, we come to another, this is getting kind of old, actually, training session with Thea and Merlin. Yes. Repetitive as hell now. <laughs> I still like the pants, though. I still like the hair, and I still like Thea. It's just Merlin, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> so that triggers a flashback when Merlin talks about, uh, you know... How he used to be a good dad. And I believe Tommy said even when he was around, he wasn't a good dad. I, I believe that was what was said in season one. I think you're right. So he was always working, I believe. So we're just really retconning the hell out of Merlin. But anyway, we see Merlin tucking Tommy into bed the night that his wife died. Well, he had just walked in. Remember in the, in the first of that flashback? Yeah. He had just walked in and told him he was on the phone with a business person. And he said, look... I need to get at least three. I just got home and I need to get at least three hours of sleep. That's me, by the way. <laughs> I live with four hours of sleep. That's insane. But yeah, I'm just saying. So he comes home and it's like, you've been ignoring your wife all day and now you want, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's felt all yeah. kinds of wrong remembering what I remember about Merlin from season one and it feels like a retcon and it doesn't feel right to me. But he's tucking to- little Tommy in, and I was just like, we couldn't do better. <laughs> like, the little kid barely, like, I was squinting, trying to make it work, and it just visually-wise didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Remember, though, this is from Merlin's point of view, too. So he's gonna paint himself in a rosy light. I thought that they were actual flashbacks and not him telling Thea. Like, because Oliver's are pretty objective, because for goodness sakes, when he's in Hong Kong, it crashes to the window and it doesn't break. I'll, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I always feel like the, the flashbacks are just kind of an objective uh, narrative device. Mm. I was thinking he was he was thinking back. He was having this flashback himself. That would make sense. But because we haven't done that before, it didn't really occur to me. But I hope so. Um, anyway, so we get that one. And the police officers take off the hat. We all know that's never a good thing. <laughs> yes, never a good thing. So then after that flashback, we see Roy go to retrieve evidence from Lance. And Lance immediately knows that it's Roy. <laughs> what do you mean? He's like, Harper, is that you? You think a little leather and lace is going to... I was like, see, I told y'all he knows Oliver's the arrow. I told y'all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but, if you think Quentin's stupid, he's stupid like a fox, okay? Yeah. Um. Anyway, then we see Roy tell Laurel that she needs stitches. And um, Team Arrow sifting through all this evidence that uh, Lance sent over... And they realize that it's useless until they discover the smoking gun. Boom! Of course. I worked in a little punny business for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, literally a smoking gun. It's the gun that was used uh, 21 years ago, I believe is what they said. I think so. Or maybe 14. Oh, well, yeah, it would have to be 21 because he was like 8 or something. Oliver's almost 30. Timeline is wonky in this episode anyway, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But then it's like the gun that killed Rebecca Merlin was the gun that they come to figure that Brick was the one that killed her. Mm-hmm. And of course... Merlin's right there to catch that little tidbit! 
That's right. How did that happen? Or Flash and Arrow suffered a convenient plot syndrome out the wazoo this week. <laughs> I just, oh my god. Just can't even right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, we've never seen him behind his computer in an office before. Yeah. And then he just happens to be there to catch that. Can you say it with me, folks? Convenient plot is convenient. Mm. So then uh, we cut the tattoo who's following Oliver through the forest. Channeling her inner Ray Palmer, apparently. <laughs> and, um, you know, he's like, if you're going to follow me, at least follow me where I can see you. And then they sit down by the fireside and have him this chat. And he's like, hey, I remember from my time in Hong Kong that you were pretty good with a sword. Want to train me? And she's like, nah, son, I don't want no part of this. But what you can do, and she's like, what you need to do is learn from somebody that learned from Ra's al Ghul. Mm-hmm. And that's the the terrible idea was planted in Oliver's head. Yes. Oh God, I, I love tattoo, but goodness, I hate us for that. Yeah, because there's no way that's gonna blow up in Oliver's face again. I know. I was gonna say he's gonna get stabbed in the back this time, not the front. Thea pops in to check in on Merlin, and he and she learns that he's gonna kill Brit. And then we get another. He goes, you know, the man that you want me to be died with my wife, and we get this flashback. Um, at her funeral, and we see young Oliver and Tommy talking, and then we see Malcolm with his basically Alfred. So yeah, then we get the flashback, and ugh, he gets he slides in the picture. Like the was it just me? But the picture was really like from the side. It was not not even a good picture. Yes, it wasn't yes. like a mug shot. This guy had a rap sheet. You didn't get the mug shot picture. It was like a surveillance photo or something. A really bad one. Then after that flashback, we see Team Arrow discussing the uselessness of the... Yeah, they're discussing the uselessness of the discovery. And then Diggle, like, I guess kind of in a joking fashion. But you know, you know how you kind of jokingly say something that gauge the, 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 the temperature of the room about an idea? I yes. feel like that's what Diggle did. <laughs> He's like, you know, we should have used Merlin to get rid of old Rick there. And, uh... Nothing, nothing. Okay, abort, abort. Laurel's like, uh, like he said something, and then Laurel's like, that's that's pretty dark. And he's like, if you don't think it's dark, you ain't been paying attention. And Laurel shoots him the dirtiest look. <laughs> I died on the first watch. I died when I saw that. I was like, damn, Bill's throwing shade like a mug. <laughs> uh, I find humor where they probably don't want me to find humor, but that's okay. <laughs> and then after that one, Felicity figures out how to track Brick and his men because they were using walkie talkies and she tunes into the frequency. Kind of, uh, we cut to this scene uh, right before uh, Laurel and Roy are off to break into Brick's uh, abandoned police department. And I love the, oh my god, Felicity, I'll get to that later. But yeah, so we see Brick, and I, I'm going to use air quotes here, so imagine air quotes. This is uh-huh. just some of his employees. <laughs> And creating out evidence. Yeah. Ugh. So then we kind of, like, the, the alarm sensors go off or something. I don't really understand how, but they do. And it causes a frenzy. It sets off, you know, bells and whistles, literally. And they go searching for the intruders. And Laurel and Roy get a couple in on a couple of the goons. But Brick? Dude, he loads a flare into the shotgun. And he is, he's gonna, he's gonna set them on fire and blow them to pieces. <laughs> He's not playing no games. And he almost got them too had it not been for Merlin. He would have got away with it if it wasn't for that pe- pesky mask <laughs> Merlin. So uh, they, they like, go out and then like Malcolm comes back. Uh, Guys, we gotta talk. Oh my god. Felicity's like, she's like spitting mad. And he's like, he proposes a team up and Felicity feels the same way I feel. Like just bile rising up from the very depths of your stomach. Yes. And you just mm, you just, you just want to just get black bile all over his shoes kind of situation. Yes. And so they send him packing. But to, to my surprise, Team Arrow actually seriously debates this offer. And Roy's like, uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to vote here? This is democracy now that Oliver's not here. Let's vote. So I guess it was three to one. I thought Laurel was down. Well, you know, you think about it. It was original Team Arrow against the new people. Um, I think I, I was proud of Felicity for sticking to her guns, you know, for following to her. I think some people were upset saying she sounded whiny and stuff, but I was like, she was know, whiny with Oliver for sure. Like I get her, yeah. paint, but she did come off as a petulant child the way that she addressed it. 
there were two lines. If they could have changed the way she said them, the episode would have felt a whole lot better for me. My thing with Felicity this whole episode, and basically since Oliver's been gone, is that they made her the de facto team leader. When she, all she is good at, no offense, like I love Felicity, she's, she's the hacker. She doesn't have the tactical skills of a soldier like Diggle. No. She doesn't. And and then also they let Roy go out in the field instead with Laurel, who's inexperienced as how they could have got them both killed instead of Diggle. Right. This should have been Diggle's chance to really freaking shine. Not Roy. Yeah. Although Agreed. I'm glad that they did finally flesh the hell out of Roy. Like, don't get me wrong, but this should have been Diggle's time to shine. Yeah. So I think that's another thing that really rubbed me the wrong way with Felicity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest about it. I don't care. But I, I see your point, too, though. Like, like I said, I totally get where Felicity's coming from, but they have been so flip-floppy about her being the moral compass of the team that it didn't ring true for me. Yeah, I think in this case, though, it was because she is morally invested in Oliver. You know, she is invested in him, and she knows Oliver's history with Tommy and with Malcolm. And so that made her more passionate about this because she knows. She knows what a a bad person Malcolm is while Laurel and and Roy kind of know from a more outside you know what I'm saying but they don't have the the depth of knowledge that that Felicity has because of talking with Oliver and meeting Tommy and knowing you know she was there and heard Tommy die and, and knows what they said and you know what I'm saying she has a very emotional connection to that and a very visceral reaction to Malcolm. Well, don't we all? <laughs> Just, I don't know. Like, I, I totally, like I said, I totally get it in this scene, but at the end of the day, I don't know. Arrow has always kind of been the show where the justi- the ends always justify the means. Always. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that's been our show. And then even when Oliver stopped killing people, he's sending people to Lian Yu without a trial. Same thing right. like they're doing on The Flash with the metahumans. So right. it's like you can't either you're going to be 100 percent like you still have vigilante tendencies. Stop trying to be a hero. Basically. Right. You want to be right. a hero, go be a cop. Right. Th- that's all. Like, I'm tired of them playing this line because Oliver is nowhere near ready to be the hero that he needs to be. So let's still lurk around in the gray shadows and not be all upright and more morally uh, indignant about everything is my mm. I guess. Gotcha. I, I-, I don't know. Like, it, it just really frustrating when they get flip floppy and then they try to stick to their guns on something and then oliver literally comes in at the end of the episode and totally subverts everything yeah yeah that, that's all then roy kind of goes storms out and goes up into the top part of her dot to lean on a reel and wish his problems away and guess who's there Thea doing the same thing and they have a really cool chat so after that roy kind of stumbles back down there and he's like we should consider this offer seriously like they um they kind of make up their mind and they send Diggle up to deliver the verdict and of course it's no and for some reason at that point we get a flashback <laughs> I'm I'm not too sure about these transitions in the flashbacks this season <laughs> <laughs> um so this is the one where Merlin confronts his wife's killer and kills him so, okay after that flashback that was an awful 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 flashback by the way yes it was really stiff and painful like I was just like really and so was the wig. Oh my god, they cannot get the wigs together on the show to save their life. Like, dude. Okay, that was worse than Island Oliver hair. But it's, it's all, no, but it's not, it's, it's a tie between the Hong Kong hair and, and John Barrowman's flashback hair. It is a tie. They, oh. It makes them look extra, extra. It's like, it's like to add instant douchery. Then we kind of go to Tatsu, who's leaving Oliver in a very, very Superman, uh, Man of Steel reminiscent scene where he's getting on the truck i was yep. just like dude seriously now you're using superman oh my god like just don't for the love of goodness just don't <laughs> anyway so she she warns him that he'll have to sacrifice the thing that's most special to him to defeat raza Ghul. and i just i just object to this okay stop pushing a lost seat on me a lot thea should be the most important thing to him after all the crappy stuff that he's pulled with thea he needs- Maybe it is. No, she was definitely hinting at Felicity. These writers, no doubt in my mind, because at the end of this episode, she's like, you know, he teams up with Malcolm, and that pushes her away. Done. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want to be... Well, we'll get there. But yeah, I, the, for me personally, that's what it felt like it was hinting at. She doesn't want to end up dead or a killer. Can't blame her. Well, she's going <laughs> to end up a killer, 
regardless if she stays on Team Hell alone. Yeah, it's true. Um, like, my, like, and I will say to to quote Malcolm, one of the only things I agree with: either you don't hesitate and kill somebody, or you get killed. But in this mm-hmm. particular, you know what you signed up for. Your superhero sidekick. Everybody has a key to the Arrow Cave at this point. After that scene, we see Thea wants to see the good in Merlin, and another flashback. Really. Malcolm gets like five flashbacks in this episode. Yeah, this is when Malcolm decides that he's he's, he's killed the guy. He's got to make a break for it, and he's heard about Nanda Prabhat. Now, how the hell the straight laced billionaire hear about Nanda Prabhat? Maybe he wasn't as straight laced as we thought. Then we see Team Arrow form a plan to get the Glades to rise up against Rick, and then we cut to Team Arrow rounding up their allies. And like this part is what was rushed. It bothered me. Yeah, and there didn't seem to be that many on either side. Yes. So, like, we see Team Arrow in the van preparing to make their final stand against Brick. And Here I thought we were going to have a scene kind of like the one, you know, where they're walking down through the tunnel, you know, the whole... Yeah, nah. Let's jump out of the A-Team van and do this. I know. It, it, like I said, it, it felt very lackluster. Um, you know, but I did kind of like Felicity's speech at that point. We're, we're going to, you know, end this one way or another. Mm-hmm. So Laurel and Roy jump out, and they tell brick that he's filled this city and they call upon their allies and the brawl starts mm-hmm. and we see ted gets a name drop that he's wildcat and he's kicking the i mean he was getting the one up on brick but brick is mm. quote-unquote invulnerable so you know yeah that makes it kind of tough to beat him definitely after he like after brick kicks his butt laurel goes to check on him and then merlin like brick runs away and he gets stopped by merlin and then out of nowhere, with no freaking hint, out comes a green arrow to mark Oliver's return. And I'm like, really? Like, Roy looked happy. Laurel's like, Oliver? And I'm like, really? This is what we're doing? Mm-hmm. I mean, there was yeah. no buildup. He could have literally came back in the next episode. I think he it could've. would be better had they won that uprising without him. Yeah. I really feel like that's what the team needed. It was just no yeah. buildup. No, like when he's talking to Tattoo, it really didn't feel like a sense of urgency. Yeah, they did not convey that well. I mean, to, even though I hate the Dark Knight, and it makes no sense, no sense at all, I did enjoy the parts where, you know, Bruce is in the uh, Bane's prison and he's working to get home to his city. Like, I feel like we didn't see enough of that from Alderman is what makes this ultimately fail as a trilogy. After that, Merlin monologues about Rebecca to Brick, and I'm like, oh, just kill him! <laughs> but he doesn't. Oliver talks him down, and, like, Malcolm's not surprised to see Oliver alive and walking around. After he told him he was dead? No, I think Malcolm... I think Malcolm knew there was a chance. I, I don't understand why the timelines are so Because hard. somebody has a TARDIS. Now, that is the only acceptable reason, Kelly. And, no, not a TARDIS, a cosmic treadmill. And he's going back in time to change something. That's the only acceptable reason. Changing something drastic and fundamental on both shows, that is the only exception that I will. That could be actually kind of cool. But something tells me not so much. That's not the case. <laughs> but then, like, so Oliver talks Marlin down from killing Brick, and then Lance rallies the troops to the glaze, and... The arrow makes this big speech on the news and apologizes for leaving the city and he won't leave again. And that's when we see Sin pull Lance to the side and say, you know, he brought up Sarah and she goes, hey, that lady in black leather ain't Sarah. Mm-hmm. He's like, but I talked to her. And she's like, you should know it was your daughter then. <laughs> oh, my heart, my heart sank and my blood boiled and I was fuming. Because, come on, man, we had to have Sin do it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. And, I mean, I thought Roy was going to tell her when he pulled her to the side to rally her to the uprising. I think he was going to try to, but I think he ran out of time or something happened that he didn't get to tell her. That's garbage. Yeah. For her to find out, that could have got her killed. Yeah, oh yeah. That's messed up. Yeah. So, anyway, after that fiasco... Malcolm then goes to tell Thea that he didn't kill Brick uh, for himself, but because of her motivation that she sees the good in him or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Then Oliver comes to see if his room is still available. And he's being all cool about Malcolm and stuff. And I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. And then like he brings up all the stuff that he did and goes, but you're going to help me kill Ra's al Ghul. And let me tell you that if Oliver 
kills Ra's al Ghul, if anybody in the Arrow Flash universe kills Ra's al Ghul, I'm done. That is a deal breaker. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I I wonder... How are we going to resolve the League of Assassins uh, subplot if we don't kill Ra's al Ghul? That's, that's my thing. It's a, win, it's, a, it's a no-win situation. Unless we have that big treadmill event. Even then, just the fact that Oliver's, like, come on, Oliver gets to drop a Ra's al Ghul. Like that 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 is that is where I draw my line of suspension of disbelief, sister. <laughs> well no, I'm saying what what if the flash goes back and changes things? I hope so, where Thea doesn't kill Sarah. Yeah. That's I what I mean. Like I, I, I like I wanna give the writers credit, but we are not having an actual crossover event anytime soon. Like we're, we're like Felicity and Ray are going over there, but that's just like a one off and one and done. Uh-huh. And maybe possibly put Ray over on the Flash kind of thing and then spin the Adam off from the Flash is the sense that I'm getting. But, like, I just don't think that they would do it. Like, I think that it would be cool as hell, but I just don't think that they trust their audience enough to follow along with that. Well, they're selling a short if they don't think that because, my goodness, you know, if it's done well, that's the problem, though. If it's done well... Well, it could be done perfectly fine on the Flash, but if we've seen... As of late, Arrow doesn't have the chops to pull it off. I'm sorry. At this point in time, I'm just calling it. And I have every faith that they can pull it out by the time we start revving up for the season finale. But right now, I'm just very unhappy. I I mean, I want to like the season of Arrow, but there's been far and few between. Just when you think it gets good and they pull you back in, then they start messing up again. So, anyway, um, after he asked Merlin for help, we see the flashback of how uh, Nysa gave Merlin his League of Assassins name. <laughs> and I really like Nysa. I like young Nysa. Mm-hmm. That was, that was a really cute flashback, but kind of unneeded. Yeah. Because, um, like I said, we had 47. Probably more along the lines of 48, 49 episode, uh, scenes if I really got nitpicky about it. Then Oliver goes to check in with Team Arrow. He drops the bomb that he's working with Merlin to defeat Ra's al Ghul. And Felicity goes out and gets some air, and Oliver does the worst thing you can ever do to a woman. When she, a woman says she needs air, give that lady some space. That's Otherwise, right. Otherwise, you're going to hear some stuff you do not want to hear. Mm-hmm. Fellas, I gave the Flash listeners a tip. This is your tip for uh, for Queen Consolidated this week, direct from me to you. <laughs> give that lady some space. This is the first time that he's chased after her. Really? I mean, I say asking her on the date was really kind of. Well, I mean, you know, when they've had a fight, this is the first time, usually it's her end up going to him. It's the first time he's really come after her. But she tells him, you know, and like, and like I said, Oliver is a terrible person. That's why I have a really hard time. I mean, he's done terrible things and he survived and all that stuff. But really, at the end of the day, he's still that spoiled brat and he needs to grow the hell up. Like, he's starting the season, but he is a terrible person. He makes terrible decisions and he's still growing and learning. Mm-hmm. You know, because what he did to Laura with Sarah and that lady that he has the baby with is just... Yeah, awful. In and of itself, awful. And if I was Felicity, I would have never gotten... Like, I'm not that kind of person. Like, if I, you know, I, I'm all for being friends, but putting my heart out there with somebody that I've seen gone all these dates and all this other stuff, I just couldn't. Like, I just, I want more for Felicity, like I said. Well, you wouldn't do that to yourself. Yeah, I'm not that kind of person. Like, I'm very cautious with my heart. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I lost you, Shepherds. I mean, I I see where you guys are coming from, but I just want more for Felicity. I want Felicity to come into her own character before she even like that's the problem. They think that love interests make a character interesting, and really, for me, it detracts from it. it yeah, it, it it doesn't add to their screen time. It detracts from me. Like I want to know about Felicity's father and more about her past, and I want to see another episode with her mom and she has a sibling, and you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I don't care who she's shacking up with in the bed, although either way, it's still hot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, let's talk about the grade, I guess. I'm I'm thinking a C. I'm, I'm, it's still in a D plus. <laughs> D is in dog. <laughs> yes. Same as last week. I I, I would have given this episode an F, but I don't know. I didn't have the heart. Like I don't think I've ever. Oh yeah, I have given an episode of Arrow F. It was the more of a queen trial. Oh, yeah. I can understand that. Those um, were just mind-numbing. Yeah. This one wasn't... Like, that's the worst episode of Arrow. Ever. Not that bad. But it, it had such potential, and it just got squandered. And I don't I don't know where it squ- got squandered. Like, I don't understand. This should have been the episode where we saw more of Oliver. 
Yeah. Like, we shouldn't even had any Oliver in the previous two episodes. Like, just a little glimpse to let us know that he's okay and that he's healing. This episode should have been, like, like I'm saying, this should have been where the timeline got corrected, where it was a couple more weeks and he was really fighting and at least doing something physical and trying to get his head right to get back to Tarzan. That's all. And the team, Team Arrow just seemed at odds with each other again. Like, I, I just don't see them still working together when Oliver gets back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. With that big Merlin thing, I just don't, I feel like Laurel and Roy would probably splinter off from Team Arrow or something like that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think there's going to be a fracture for a while. I think that, and I think that that would be interesting. Like I said, I really, Laurel needs somebody. Mm-hmm. As a friend, as an ear, somebody she can train with, because I don't want her to train with Oliver. No, like I've I've said that before. I said if Laurel becomes Black Canary, she cannot train with Oliver. Like she just can't. Yeah, she needs to become the Canary, the Black Canary in her own right, with very little help from Oliver. Right. So, yeah. She's and now she can't train with with Ted. Well, they left that open ended. It was so many people who tweeted them and said you know hey man why would you do that to J.R. Ramirez why would you do that to Wildcat mm-hmm. and you know he's just he looks just beaten really badly and they, they I mean the, the cops are back the ambulance I mean Oliver was standing on an ambulance I'm just saying That's no true. he was standing on a paddy wagon actually but they had the help to get there just in, in time enough so you know they left it open ended I hope they didn't kill off J.R. Ramirez yeah um as they're learning the lesson with uh, Jane the Virgin, the Hispanic uh, <laughs> demo is pretty awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we could use a lot more of that on the CW. And um, I think that he was a great addition. I think the character of Ted Grant is awesome. Yes, agreed. And I really hope that J.R. Ramirez isn't dead. And I hope that he comes back. He heals up and comes back. And trains with Laurel. He goes out with It would be a shame for them to do that. Yes. Scene of the night. Uh I uh, know. Um, goodness, for me, I would say okay. I like the scene between Roy and and Quentin, <laughs> where he's like, "Harper, is that you?" I'll, I'll see you one lick, uh, Quentin scene, and I'll raise you another where he <laughs> offers his help, and Felicity says, "I'll send Arsenal over." And he's like, "What are you just pulling names out of a hat now?" <laughs> that was good too. That that's another thing. I really need more. Paul Blackthorn on this show, like yes. they need to they need to give him a Joe West role. Like they need something meaty. Yes. Line of the night. Pro probably probably the uh, the the leather and lace comment. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, there has to be something else. Oh, uh, I guess I'll go with the arrow. Stupid little triumphant return speech. Um, I've been gone, and I'm sorry. Sorry for what the city has had to endure in my absence. But you endured it, and the evidence of that struggle is lying at my feet. You did not fail this city, and I promise I will not fail you by leaving it again. And for good measure, Ted, it's a good thing you fight better than you lie. Yes. That's true. Most memorable moment? I'd say Sin telling uh, Quentin, it's not your daughter. As, as much as I hated the flashbacks and how useless I think this particular scene is, I absolutely just adored the way... Nyssa gave, uh, Nyssa gave Merlin his name. Like, because yeah. in the comic books, Merlin is a magician. And I, like, I was always kind of bothered that they kind of didn't. And then when they revealed that it was his League of Assassin name, and I go, I wonder how he got that nickname. Like, you know, I had wondered, and now they kind of answered that for me. So there you go. Um, who is your character of the night? Let's see. I would say... I'm going to begrudgingly give it to Felicity. I mean, yeah. she's the one that had the most screen time. That's true. And she, like, literally, like, it was weird. Um, she made some good, valid points. And, yeah, she came across whiny, but like I said, I still understand where she's coming from. Yes. But it kind of detracts from it that she isn't with Ray in the next episode. She's, like, still helping Team Arrow. Like, if she was that disgusted, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that flip-floppy, wishy-washy thing that I was talking about. Either stand your ground and totally be done with Team Arrow for now and go work with Ray. Or, you know, admit that Oliver has a point. Like, we kind of talked about it, early, well, not on the podcast, but yesterday we talked about it over the phone about how um, Oliver didn't explain himself very well. Like, it makes absolute sense that he would do this. Right. But he just didn't explain himself well. Right. Because 
if he doesn't if he doesn't beat Roz. Either way, his city's gonna burn. Right, and and Dia will die, and you know, he, he doesn't want to see his sister dead. I, I think what else is really bothering me and Felicity is that he didn't tell Dia what Malcolm did to her. Right, right. Well, and two, do do you not think that if Roz comes to to burn and rape and pillage the city, do you not think he's going to take out Team Arrow too? Exactly, especially because you know Oliver defied death once. Right. <laughs> he's gonna make sure, damn sure, he ain't gonna do it again. Exactly, and he's gonna take out the whole team. Yeah, that's just how vindictive he is. Absolutely. So I don't know. Like, I get, I get Oliver's side more than I get Felicity's side. And it's, like I said, the way that they wrote it, it just was like, really, you're mad because I wanted you to make a different choice. And I'm like, whoa, sister, don't finish that. If okay, if she would have delivered. A couple lines differently I think a lot of people would have thought differently of her stand I think the point of it was to make her look like a whiny no okay I'm just gonna get to my crackpot theory conspiracy theory Uh okay now if you listen to Flashpoint you uh, probably heard me say that they are and uh, you probably seen the rumors that they're plant they're trying for an Adam spinoff and let's be honest honestly for me I feel like Felicity has run a course on on Team Arrow Okay. I, well, because she just doesn't get enough time, enough backstory, because she's competing with all these other people, right? Mm-hmm. And I want to know more about Felicity, and I want her to fulfill this weird uh, prototype oracle situation that she's created for herself. Mm-hmm. And I think that if she went on a show with just the Adam, and she's his technical support, we could get more of her story. Mm. I think that Felicity, uh, Emily Bat definitely deserves her own vehicle. Mm-hmm. I think that she has the, the following to do it. That would be cool. And I think that the executive producers know that. And so they have to literally force a wedge between Felicity and Oliver because I don't think people were really expecting the Adam to re- Ray Palmer's character to really dig into the fandom the way that it did. Like I said, my personal opinion is that I thought the thought that the right. show was going to be more relevant. But surprise, surprise, you never know these things. And now they're like, well, it can't just be Brandon Roth. You know, he still has a lot mm-hmm. of people and grudges against him. And that, yeah, after freaking Luke. That makes sense. So, I mean, come on, think about it. They're going to the to the Flash together, just the two of them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And that was out of nowhere. That decision came out of <laughs> nowhere. So that is my crackpot conspiracy theory, that they're driving the wedge between Elocity, um, so that she can go off and do her own thing, and people don't take it as hard. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Once it's announced, if it's announced. And if it's not announced, if it doesn't get picked up, then they'll find some cockamamie excuse to get them back. That makes sense. So that's all. That That's how it, like, I, just as a person who just is in the TV industry every day, I just kind of see the strings that are getting pulled. And I think that's probably what frustrated me the most about this episode. Best character interaction? I would say Roy and Detective Lance. Detective Lance and Sin. Because we got to give Sin her props because we're so happy to have her back. Mine was Roy and Thea. They were the most least insufferable thing about this episode. Yes, they were nice together. It was nice to see them talking. Roy just, he, this is the thing, he's so still in love with Thea. Every time she gives him advice, he literally goes back, marching back down to the air. Okay, listen here now. Yes, he does. I love that about Roy. Thea does bring the best out in almost everybody. I, yes. I, I like that about Thea. There was really not a lot of good action. I'm sorry. Like, the uprising, it was cool how they caught it, but come on, those goons had guns. And they're just going to get into a fist fight? Yeah. I don't think so. That, that's all. It was just like, we saw Digger with the gun, he didn't even get to shoot it off. I was like, oh, David Ramsey with an, with an A, I think it was an AR-15, not a, yeah, pretty sure. Looked like it. Yeah, I was just like, ooh, does things to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, do you have any good action? Did you spot any? <laughs> Did I spot any? Because um, I thought that the fight went at the uh, the Glades Abandoned Precinct, it was uh-huh. too crowded. And, like, it didn't give them enough room, room. to really do anything but throw people. Yeah. And it, it kind of was hard to figure out on screen. It just didn't... It wasn't visually beautiful. I, I was bummed out. I was like, it's called Uprising, and this is all we get? 
<laughs> you dated and, date and switch. Date and switch. There you go. What was your biggest shocker surprise of the night? Uh, that Felicity held to her guns. Really? I mean, she's been doing that all season. Yeah, no. I mean, this is something huge. And, you know, the question of would you would you do that when you, you know that your heart is on the line? You know what I'm saying? When you care about somebody that much, will you hold true to your beliefs or would you cave? And I was proud of her for standing her ground. And, you know, maybe they'll come to common ground once, once they talk. But... I'm I'm proud that you know she she basically said you know every all the women in your life have either you know wound up dead or <laughs> or killers and I don't want to do that. Um, okay, I think my biggest shock of the night there was only one actual comic book. Really? I mean, there were like six little silly Easter eggs. I mean, that I barely even count as Easter eggs, but actually coming from the comic book outside of Bloodhaven, there was one. Wow. I mean, in an episode like this, they should have just piled it on. Just yeah, honest. that's all. And in the 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 reference that I'm talking about is uh, Brick said he was a part of the Orchard Bay Butcher Gang, and um, Orchard Bay is the name of Star City's downtown area in the comic books. Oh, cool! And uh, if you guys know, if you read my review this week, you know how sick I am of Bloodhaven, especially since they had the chance to make Nightwing happen, and now it's never gonna happen because guess what? He's getting his own show over on TNT, and it's called Titans. Mm-hmm. So I'm bummed out about that, because that probably means that Stephen R. McQueen won't be able to be Nightwing. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks! Because, well, actually, they're kind of writing him off on the t- Vampire Diaries, so it's very possible that he might have actually got that role now that I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, so I kind of just already did the Easter egg. <laughs> okay. Arrows season 2.5 number 12 the suicide squad takes on Kem Adam and one member of the team will not make it out alive don't miss this finale of crisis in conduct you know it ain't diggle written by Mark Guggenheim pencils by Simon Kudransky inks by S- S- Simon Kudransky colored by Jim Charlampadis it's 23 pages, digital release date, February 2nd. Woohoo! Uh, we also have a proper Green Arrow title, Green Arrow number 39. Uh, the blurb for it is Green Arrow versus Seattle, and the eyes don't look good for Oliver, uh, for Ollie. Um, this one, of course, is written by Andrew Kreisberg and Ben Sikowski. The pencils were by Dan Sampier. And, uh, the inks were by Jonathan Gal- Galpion and... Colored by Gabe L. Tabe. And the cover was by Brian Hitch and Alex Sinclair. It is 27 pages long. The print release date and the digital release date were both February 4th, 2015. I've read this one. It's pretty interesting. I'm really, really... I didn't really... After the Felicity Smoke thing, I was very skeptical about the Green Arrow and how this is going to go with Andrew and Ben writing for the TV and the comic book. But... 38 and 39 have been pretty dang good. Cool. So I would recommend to check it out. And if you are one of the first seven people to uh, leave us some email, yes, another bribe. It hasn't really been working. I don't know why you guys don't want free swag, but I'll keep offering. You will win a uh, Green Arrow number 39 and a uh, Arrow 2.5 number 12. A digital copy. So if you want this, send in some email, people. Sweet. But uh, mm-hmm. just in case I have them, it is queenconsolidated.smg at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter. If you, if you, the first two people to tweet, uh, give me, <laughs> give me some free swag, I guess. Uh, it's been <laughs> at QC underscore SMG pod over on Twitter. You can win the same thing, uh, digital copies as well. So, yeah. I'm really eager to give stuff away, guys. Accommodate me! <laughs> Make her happy. Uh, she doesn't want to be grump- Grumpy Cat forever. <laughs> but we did get some new Twitter followers this week. Um, that was always nice. Um, I hope you guys decide to join us uh, 
for the next episode. Uh, next episode looks really interesting, actually. Uh, we've got Katie Lutz back, so I know that's going to bring back some of the fans that left when she died. Um, so yeah, uh, guess it's time for a little shameless plug and self-promotion. Alrighty. Well, you can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, about every social media. At Super Squint. That's S U P E R S Q U I N T. I also review the Flash for VoiceofTV.com. And you can listen to my other podcasts that I co host uh, Before the Bat with Phil and Tyler. And of course, Flashpoint with the lovely Miss Lilith. Um, you guys know me. I'm Lil Hellfire. You can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. You can find me on Instagram at Lil Hellfire. At- 86. Um, I'm on Tumblr. My personal Tumblr is liliththeoryhellfire.tumblr.com If you are into Supernatural, Doctor Who, Sherlock, or Hannibal, you can uh, go to my fan blog, which is superwholockjunkie.tumblr.com So, uh, you can find, like again, uh, our Tumblr, actually, for this podcast is queensconsolidatedpodcast.tumblr.com uh, Be sure to follow us. I will be doing my best to stay updated with promo pics and videos and synopsis and interviews and stuff like that. So I'm trying to be a one-stop shop for you guys. So come follow us and leave us stuff in our ass box because Anonymous is on. And we'd like to answer. Yeah, use it, but... Don't abuse it. <laughs> um, also, I want to encourage you guys to like us over on iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe. Don't fail the city. Don't fail this podcast. Make sure you download. Because streaming doesn't count. That's right. And uh, be sure to check out uh, www.southgatemediagroup.com. It is, uh, you can find all of our 50 plus podcasts there. Like I said, we have podcasts for Pinterest. We have a podcast for Star Wars. With the new uh, movies coming out, you might want to stay up to date. This has been Queen Consolidate. We hope you've enjoyed our uh, discussion of episode 312, Uprising. I hope I wasn't a raging grumpy cat. I understand where I'm coming from. I love this show so much, but it just when it disappoints me, it hurts so bad. So, um, unless you're stuck on a hellish island or a Nanda Pavot somewhere, we hope that you uh, tune in next. Queen Consolidated, signing off.